Brian, could you explain tipping material? What is it and how does it affect your writing? Okay, that's cool. Um, first off, David, I have Fountain Pen 101, which explains in kind of very basic terms, the parts of a pen explains tipping a little bit there, but I can do a little deeper dive. That's why I took this question. I've talked about tipping a lot in various parts, but this is a nice little concise way uh, to do it. So this will make a nice little Q&A slice, I think. So if you uh, go to go to our blog or on YouTube, look up Fountain Pen 101, especially the parts of a fountain pen, it explains some of it there. Also, there's one on nib sizes and grinds. And that one can be really helpful too, to explain to you what the different tipping sizes mean and how they affect your writing. But I'll give you an overview here. Um, so basically, when you have a fountain pen, the uh, the the metal part is called the nib. And then you have the tip, which is the part that actually touches the paper. And on just about all modern fountain pens, you're going to find, not exclusively, but pretty much, um, you're going to find uh, a little ball that has been welded onto the tip. And that's uh, with the tipping material. So why do you have that ball? It's because you actually create quite a bit of friction when you're writing with a fountain pen on paper. And even if you have a stainless steel, stainless steel is a pretty durable metal, but the tipping that they put on there is some kind of like iridium alloy. It's a very, very very, very hard metal, harder than steel, and so it's a, a harder, longer wearing metal than just the stainless steel would be. Especially if you have a gold nib, that would wear out reasonably quickly. So you really need tipping material on a gold nib. Um, there's some exceptions, like some of the italic uh, stub nibs that you get that are stainless steel may not be tipped. That's because stainless steel is pretty hard wearing, and when you have a stub or italic nib, there's a lot more metal that's touching the paper. So it's not uh, as critical to have the tipping on it as it is on some of the finer nib sizes. But basically, that tipping material is there to make your nib last longer. That's really kind of the point of it. It also can affect the way that it writes in terms of how smooth it's going to feel. So how properly it's going to be aligned as far as the tines, because your, your nib has two different tines where the ink flows down through them. Um, and if they're out of whack, it can affect things. Um, so you got to make sure they're aligned there. But specifically with the tipping, you know, how coarse or how fine you, gr you smooth that tip of that nib, it's going to affect how much drag you feel on the page. And it's very subtle. It's not even something you can really tell visually. It's something you, it's very tactile. You have to feel it. But you can feel a, feel a difference. You really can. Your, your hands are more sensitive than you might think. So when you have something that's not ground very smooth, um, it's, you know, they basically, there's different grits of kind of, you know, it's not really sandpaper, it's really fine. You use like a micro mesh type of thing, um, which if you're familiar with pens at all, a micro mesh is a really good smoothing tool. But there's different degrees, different grits that you can get. If you use a coarser grit, it's going to feel more like a pencil, like very, very, uh, it's going to have a drag to it. You'll hear it audibly, you'll hear more of a sound as you're writing across the page. It won't, it, you know, it's just going to feel a little more resistance. If you grind it really, really smooth, then it's just going to glide effortlessly across the paper. Depending on your own preference, one could be better, one could be worse. It really depends. Um, and the other thing that the tipping material does is depending on exactly how it's ground, what shape, what size the tipping material is, is going to affect how broad the line is on your page. So it's not like you know uh, a pencil where the more you use it, it'll wear down and that kind of stuff. It's pretty much fixed as to what it is. And you can have some influence of your line width based on how absorbent your paper is, the, how much your ink flows, and things like that. But really, one of the biggest factors is going to be the tipping that you have on the nib. So if you have a really fat, wide tip, you're going to write a big, fat, wide line. If you have a really thin one, it's going to be a thin line. Pretty much makes sense, right? Um, and then you can get into some kind of unique nib sizes like italic or stub grinds, where it's not just a ball on the tip of the nib, but it's more flat like this. So you get variation in your writing as you do a cross stroke and a down stroke. Or you can get other oblique ones, which is even more rare it's a lot like a stub, except it's kind of cut on an angle. So it, it just gives it kind of a different look to it as well. That's mainly for people that write kind of hook-handed or you know with different angles and stuff like that to give it um, more of a stub-like look. Um, so there's lots of different ways. And then there's other really unique types of grinds that can be done, Architect grinds and Waverly, and all these other unique things that can affect your writing at different angles and stuff. But the, the essence of what I'm trying to get to in this particular question is that the tipping really can affect the way that your writing will look in addition to some other factors that may be going on. So that's what's up with the tipping. Hope that can help you out there, David.